every day I wake up, drink from a new cup, full of your grace, full of your grace. I'ma need a re up, gotta get a re up, every day, every day. Cause I'm lost right now, I'm so lost right now. All these thoughts. Welcome to another episode of Ray Unboyking is Unprovoked. Um, what does it mean to lean not on your own understanding? Um, I was laying in bed and 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 that scripture came to me. I said, "Uh oh, I'm out of pocket." <laughs> I said, uh oh, that's God correcting me. Um, not to not to trust my own understanding, you know, because sometimes as as human beings, we uh, you know we tend to do that, <clears throat> and um, you know, and that's not how God wants us to think. Are, 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 are to be you know he want us to um to trust him and uh if i'm going through it you know um i want to know how many others are, are you know are dealing with the same thing and you know i just want to help others um you know so um proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 through 6 um it's a very familiar um passage um to many people um it it reads, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Um, here we have a positive and we have a negative. Um, on one side, we are told to um, trust the Lord. And on the negative side, <clears throat> we're, um, uh, we're told not to trust our own understanding. Um, those two things are mutually uh, exclusive, um, meaning it's very uh, limiting or limited. Um, in other words, if we trust the Lord, we cannot also depend upon our own ability to understand everything that um, God is doing. Um, see, we only see part of the picture God is painting for us, right? Um, when an artist begins to paint, um, he starts off with a, uh, with a blank canvas. Um, we don't know what, the you know, the finished product is until the artist is finished. Uh, that just, uh, it, it, it's, it's the same thing, um, with God. We only see part of God plan, um, for our life. Um, if we are truly, um, to trust him, we have to let go of our of our pride. Um, we got to let go of our programs. We got to let go of our own plans for our life. Um, because uh, because even the best laid human plans cannot begin to approach um, God's plan. Um, for the for the foolishness of God is wiser than any human wisdom. Um, most of us have a desperate desire to understand, but in so many are areas, we must acknowledge that we cannot understand it. Uh, we must approve of God's ways, even when we can't comprehend them ourselves, right? Um, in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse eight through nine, um, it tells us, uh, while we often don't understand what God is doing, um, it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Isn't that something? And it says, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, God sees the whole picture while we only see parts of it. Um, see, to trust in the Lord with all our heart means we can't. Uh, place our own right to understand above his right to direct our lives the way he see fits. Um, when we insist on God always making sense to our limited minds, we are setting ourselves up for spiritual trouble um, because our limited understanding can easily lead us astray. Um, the Bible said there is a way that appears to be right. But in the end, it leads to what? Death. Um, so when we choose to direct our lives according to what we seems right to us, we often reap the disaster. How many times, uh, 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 you know, have you just just did 
just went about doing something the way you wanted to do it. And, you know, and, and here it is in your mind. You're like, yeah, I, you know, I know this here going to work. And then it doesn't work. Then what? Now you're looking at God like, God, well, what, what, why you didn't do this here? Then you tell, go into your parents. Well, why y'all didn't tell me this here? How many times have you been in a relationship with someone? <clears throat> Everybody telling you, don't mess with that man. Don't mess with that woman. And here it is. You, I love him. Or here the man, I love her and all this, this stuff. Then at the end, you know, <laughs> you get messed over. Now you're looking stupid and silly. Why y'all ain't tell me? We did tell you. See, you're so blinded by your own thoughts and you, you, you're blinded by, <laughs> you're blinded, you know, by quote unquote love and not waiting on God, you know, your own plan because you saw fit to chase that no good man. You saw fit to chase that no good woman. Don't blame anybody else for your, uh, for your, for the choices that you made. That's just why God, that's why God said his thoughts <laughs> for my thoughts and not your thoughts. Neither are your ways. But yeah, I'm tickled by that one. Please forgive me. But um, <laughs> uh, he's right to direct our lives the way he seems fit. Uh, we uh, when we insist on God always making sense to our limited minds, we are setting ourselves up for a spiritual trouble. Um, our limited understanding can easily lead us astray. Um, but um, for every for every culture has tried to get God to approve of its uh, definition of right and wrong. But God never changes and his standards never change. He don't change. The Bible said God is not a man that what he should lie. That should say is all right. He's not going to lie. Man will lie, but God won't. Neither the son of man did he should what repent. God don't have to repent for nothing because he's God. See, we got to repent to him for doing things that we don't supposed to be doing. For our sins. Right. Have he said and he should not do it. Or has he spoken and, and, and shall he not make it good? James 1 and 17 says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Romans 11, 29, so for 29 said for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. See, every person must make a decision whether to live his or her life according to a personal preference or according to the unchanging word of God. It's your choice. You know, I'm not here to make your mind up for you. You know, it's not my job to make you do anything. It's not my job to make you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's not my job to force you to love God. You know, because you can't love God and do whatever you want to do. That's a lie. That is a lie. So don't believe that lie. Because if you love God. That means you have to what? Do his commandments. And if you're not doing his commandments, that means you don't love God. Now, that's out the way. Because God his, is unchanging. Like I said, every person must make must make a decision whether uh, whether to live his or her life. According to God's word, that's your choice. See, we uh, we often will not understand how God is causing all things to work together for the good. But when we trust him with all our hearts, we know that he is and he will never fail us. See, we often um, don't know how God is causing it. But we know that all things work together for the good. We know it. In the book of Psalms 119, 142, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and the law is the truth. Philippians 2 and 13 said, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and do of his good pleasure. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the father but by me. I am the true vine. 
One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Um, you know, salvation doesn't come from our good deeds, right? Or by doing anything special. Um, it is a free gift from God just because he loves us so much. Um, we need to turn away from our sins, believe that Jesus is God's son and our savior and submit to him as Lord of our lives. But doing so, we receive salvation and eternal life. Um, this, this prayer, um, I just want to pray real quick. Um, dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Um, I believe you died for my sins. Right now, I turn from my sins and open the door of my heart and life. I confess you as my personal Lord and my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, this is Ray Boykin is Unprovoked. See you next time. Peace. Every day I wake up, drink from a new cup, fill your grace.